So um, I think that we agree on uh, almost everything, right? I think that we agree that the germinal center uh, DLBCL type is biologically distinct from the activated B cell subtype. I think the activated B cell subtype uh, really does have a worse prognosis than the germinal center subtype. And I think that uh, curing more patients with different subtypes will require a biologically uh, driven strategy in the future. And I believe that you will uh, use cell of origin to guide therapy in the future, but not today. <clears throat> so uh, I was expecting a little bit more uh, obvious evidence that the cell of uh, origin had an impact on prognosis, but I will summarize that there are a, actually a handful of studies that have demonstrated that immunohistochemistry uh, can differentiate between germinal center origin and non-germinal center origin, and then in those studies, the patients with the germinal center origin did not do as well. And there have been a few studies, uh, one from Cornell, a couple from uh, other centers, that have shown that the addition of another drug to our CHOP does in fact uh, improve or appears to improve outcomes uh, in patients with the non-germinal center subtype specifically. However, I think there is uh, an equal, at least, amount of evidence on the opposite side of STRAC. So looking at the R-CHOP era, in fact, there are several studies that show that using immunohistochemistry to differentiate between germinal center subtype and non-germinal center subtype, there is no difference in overall survival. This is not to say that the, there's no difference between germinal center subtype and ABC subtype, but our existing technology, available technology, is not sufficient to demonstrate the difference. So this is a, a, a study from Scandinavia looking at a large uh, retrospective series of patients. And in this series, the Hans algorithm of immunistic chemistry was totally insufficient to differentiate between uh, or uh, look at outcomes that did not correlate with outcome. Uh, with uh, at the NCI looking at EPOC and a large uh, center or a large series from Nebraska, again, no difference in outcome looking at Hans algorithm. Uh, this is the Recover60 study looked at uh, R-CHOP versus CHOP, and in the rituximab CHOP group, uh, the patients that had germinal center subtype had an equivalent outcome to the patients with the non-germinal center subtype. In fact, the only difference was based on morphology. The patients with the immunoblastic morphology had a worse outcome. This was a, a bigger uh, series uh, from Spain, a retrospective series from Spain, again, looking at multiple different immunohistochemistry algorithms, not just Hans, but Choi and Tali and several others. Again, no uh, significant difference there. Uh, Holt, so this was a, ret a prospective clinical trial done in Scandinavia looking at r -CHOIT plus methotrexate. And again, no difference between the germinal center subtype and non-germinal center subtype. And uh, this is, in fact, the study that Dr. Friedberg just referenced, again, showing that using, in fact, gene expression profiling, there was no difference between germinal center subtype and ABC subtype once you segregated patients out based on uh, MYC and BCL2 status. So how did this uh, get so confusing? A lot of it has to do with uh, changes in morphology and pathologic uh, classifications, in particular differences using gene expression profiling versus immunohistic chemistry, there are probably some selection bias, non-uniform therapy in all of these studies, as well as other sources of bias. I think that everyone widely agrees that gene expression profiling is the gold standard for differentiation between ABC subtype and GCB subtype. Uh, unfortunately, gene expression profiling is not available pretty much anywhere outside the setting of a research uh, study. So several groups have looked at different immunohistic chemistry, and this is what we currently use at Cornell. When I see a patient, I will write in my note, this is the non-GC subtype based on whatever uh, immunohistic chemi uh, immunohistic chemistry uh, is done in that patient. Unfortunately, IHC tends not to agree very well with itself in terms of differentiating between ABC and GCB subtypes. And in fact, when you look at, this was just published looking at nanostring technology, which did in fact correlate very well with uh, GCB or ABC-GCB uh, gene expression profiling, it did not correlate very well with different immunohistochemistry. chemistry. And when you look at uh, overall survival, looking at nanostring and gene expression profiling, there was a difference in these patients, but there was not a difference in terms of immunohistochemistry chemistry and overall survival. 
In fact, other groups have shown this going all the way back to 19, or 2007. That scheme, Scandinavian study showed that gene expression profiling did segregate people, but in immunohistochemistry didn't. And uh, as well, same thing with the Spanish series. So clearly subtypes, uh, so clearly the, the way we test for these uh, uh, differences in terms of cell of origin has a major impact on how we're going to treat them going forward. But beyond that, there are other reasons why it gets more confusing. And I think immunistic chemistry uh, confounds or confuses these differences. As Dr. Friedberg mentioned, the MYC and BCL2 are clearly a major uh, factor in the ABC and GCB subtype. So uh, GCB subtype clearly has double hit lymphomas, but the ABC subtypes, roughly 30% of them may be double expressors. And when you look, uh, again, I mentioned this earlier, when you look at gene expression profiling and you take out the patients with the ABC and GCB subtype, or MYC positive, the outcomes are the same. That's not necessarily to say that targeted therapies won't have an impact on MYC or BCL2. It's possible that inhibiting uh, BTK with ibrutinib could theoretically downregulate BCL2 or MYC. We don't have that answer, but that is a question that has to be interpreted using gene expression profiling, not immunohistochemistry. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't have those answers yet, and it's impossible to apply data from other studies showing that, for example, lenalidomide improves outcomes without having data on BCL2 or MYC. So all of the data that's been published that shows there's a difference in terms of cell of origin is almost impossible to interpret without having data on uh, BCL2 and MYC. Even if we assume that uh, we can use gene expression profiling and differentiate people effectively between germinal center subtype and ABC subtype, and we say, okay, we're going to use this therapy, so we know, for example, ibrutinib has some activity in the ABC subtype, or bortezomib has some activity in the ABC subtype. All of these have, their, their activity is not perfect. And in fact, uh, it will never be perfect. It will never be 100% of ABC subtypes that respond to ibrutinib. There are people with downstream mutations uh, below BTK that will make ibrutinib ineffective. So even if we could use gene expression profiling, under certain circumstances, ibrutinib adds nothing over RCHOP other than uh, toxicity. Also, I should mention that the strategy of using gene expression or using a cell of origin has already failed one. So the Enzostorin study, a PK, PKC beta inhibitor, which is important in uh, the ABC subtype, uh, using Enzostorin maintenance after RCHOP uh, failed, unfortunately. So uh, let's say that all of that is wrong and that you do want to use something. So how do you, how do you pick? Do you pick bortezomib? because you like the preclinical data and because it's the least expensive one? Do you pick lenalidomide because that's where the uh, most clinical data probably is right now? Do you pick ibrutinib because it's oral and maybe the best tolerated? We don't, we don't know. So I think even if you could say that I would like to treat these patients differently, it would be very hard pressed to say exactly how differently you should treat them. Finally, I'll just make the point that I think as oncologists, we're all genetically programmed to be optimistic. You see the data from the Mayo Clinic that says giving lenalidomide plus RCHOP makes people with the non-GCB subtype do as well as the GCB subtype. It's a very compelling data to say that, yes, you've improved the outcomes of the non-GCB uh, subtype. Uh, and I think it's hard to ignore that data, but I, I would make the point that if, if in fact lenalidomide works so well in the non-GCB subtype or bortezomib works so well in the non-GCB subtype, why is it that when we look at the PFS curves in all of those cases, the outcomes are exactly the same? I think that it may be true that the ABC subtype does better with lenalidomide or with ibrutinib or bortezomib. I think the problem is the way we're differentiating them between GCB and uh, non-GC subtype Beli uh, makes it impossible really to find those differences. So unfortunately, although I think in the future we will be using cell of origin, right now in standard clinical practice, uh, we just can't do it. So that's my uh, answer. Thank you very much.